Hey, this is Mr. Perez. In this video, we are going to perform multiplication with fractions. But before we get started, we gotta get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready to go? All right, <laughs> let's get started right there. Two thirds times four. Let's begin by visually showing our calculation using a number line. Well, two thirds times four, remember, when you multiply something by four, it means two thirds plus two thirds plus two thirds plus two thirds. Remember, multiplication is repeated addition. Now, our denominator remains unchanged and we work with our numerators. Remember this, two plus two plus two plus two. And that gives us eight thirds for our answer. So notice, two thirds times four is eight thirds or two and two thirds. Now, a lot of my students get confused when they multiply with fractions because sometimes they think, hey, whenever you multiply, the number has to get larger. That's not true. When you have fractions, you won't get a larger result all the time. For instance, when you do 2 thirds times 4, the answer is not larger than 4. It's actually less than 4. 2 thirds times 4 is actually 2 and 2 thirds, or 8 thirds. So how do we perform this calculation arithmetically without showing it on a number line? Well, here we go. We have 2 thirds times 4, and now we're going to rewrite the 4 as a fraction. Just simply put it over 1, because 4 divided by 1 is 4. And if you remember from our previous video, how do you multiply fractions, Charlie? Straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Very nice, that's true. So if we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, we get 8 thirds for our answer. So there you go. All right, let's try some more problems here. 0 thirds times 5. If we write the 5 as a fraction, we simply write 5 over 1, and we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, and notice we get 0 over 3. Remember, when you have 0 in the numerator and a non-zero number in the denominator, the answer has to be 0, because remember that pattern, Charlie? That one? The answer has to be 0, because 3 times 0 is 0, so the answer is 0. How about 1 third times 4? Well, let's write the repeated addition representation first, meaning one-third times four means one-third plus one-third plus one-third plus one-third, which means the answer has to be four-thirds, right? Let's write the four as four over one and multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, and notice we get four-thirds for our answer, and that is correct. All right, two-fifths times seven. Rewrite the seven as seven over one and multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, and we get 14 over 5. That's our answer there. Now, how about 2 sevenths times 6? Don't get scared. Simply write the 6 as a fraction, 6 over 1, and multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and you get 12 sevenths. That's your answer there. How about 11 ninths times 2? Again, write the 2 as a fraction in the form of 2 over 1, multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and you get 22 over 9. Now that we're warmed up, Let's continue on. Here we have one half times eight thirds. Now watch, Charlie. If we multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, we get eight six, right? Now we have to reduce. Darn it. Both eight and six are even numbers, so two is a common factor, so we'll divide top and bottom by two, and that gives us four thirds. Now, can we reduce before we multiply? Well, that's something called cross-canceling, or that's what some people call it. Remember, you can only cross-cancel when you have the operation of multiplication there. Remember, 8 and 2 have a common factor of 2. So why not, before we multiply, divide that common factor out? Remember, you can only do this across a multiplication symbol, and you have to choose a number that's on top and cancel it with a number that's on the bottom, meaning you have to have a number on top and a number on the bottom that have a common factor. In this case, both 8 and 2 have a common factor of 2, so we'll divide that out. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 2 divided by 2 is 1. And notice, when we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, we have 1 times 4 in our numerator and 1 times 3 in the denominator, and our answer is 4 thirds. So here we got 4 thirds by reducing before we multiply. And that is very useful, especially when the numbers are very large. So here we have 5 fourths times 8 thirds. Notice if you multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, we end up with 40 twelfths. Now you have to reduce. 40 and 12 have a common factor of 4, so we divide that out, and we end up with 10 thirds for our answer. Well, 
Why not reduce before we multiply or cross cancel? Both the 8 and the 4 have a common factor of 4, so let's divide that out. 8 divided by 4 is 2, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and we have in our numerator 5 times 2, and our denominator is 1 times 3. And that gives us the answer of 10 thirds. All right, let's do another one. 15 sevenths times 14 fifths. If we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, what's 15 times 14, Charlie? Yeah, I don't know either, so the computer tells us it's 210. Okay, in our denominator, it's 35, 7 times 5, right? And now they have a common factor of 35. I know, that's what the computer told me. Anyway, 210 divided by 35 is 6, and 35 divided by 35 is 1. And so 6 divided by 1 is 6. That's our answer. Well, let's reduce before we multiply, right? 14 and 7 have a common factor of 7, so let's divide out that common factor. 14 divided by 7 is 2. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 15 and 5 have a common factor of 5, so let's divide that out. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So notice our numerator becomes 3 times 2, and our denominator is 1 times 1. And so our answer is 6 over 1, which is 6 divided by 1, which is 6. That's a much more efficient way of getting the answer, right? That's some good kung fu right there. All right, so that's enough of reducing. We'll see you again soon.